Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation skill series and um, we're actually now going to be moving on to cloud object storage. Now as I said in the introduction to this series, this, um, this, this series of videos has actually been put together by the, um, the IBM Cloud technical SME team uh, and this particular section is actually um, being produced by a colleague of mine, uh, John Easton, who's an IBM distinguished engineer. So without uh, further ado, I'll hand you over to John. In this short video, I'd like to introduce you to IBM Cloud Object Storage. So what is object storage? Well, it's somewhat different to other forms of storage that you might have come across before. It's not like a file system. There's no directory structure or tree structure of folders in which you can place files. Similarly, it's not like block storage in that it doesn't look like a disk. So what does object storage look like? It really looks like a series of buckets or containers. Buckets is the term that we tend to use here. And files are put into buckets in a variety of different ways. The thing is, is that the data is stored as an object together with metadata and a unique identifier. This allows people to search object storage and find files to do things with them at a later stage. So why do we use it? One of the main reasons is that we may need to grow the quantity of data that we're storing by a large amount. An object storage effectively gives you a, a large pool of storage which scales up and, and down as your needs change. It allows you to search and store large quantities of unstructured data. And it's typically used for things like backups, large file sets, media files and the like. The one thing to watch about object storage is that it tends to perform more slowly than other storage subsystems. It certainly performs more slowly than a local disk. And so it may not necessarily be suitable for storing access or storing data that needs to be accessed frequently or ones where data needs high performance access to it. So let's look at IBM Cloud Object Storage and understand you know, the key features that the thing brings. You know, it gives you a range of storage tiers that allow you to best meet your needs. We'll talk more about those in a couple of slides time. And similarly, because you want your data to be stored reliably, we give you a range of different resiliency choices that might allow you to meet your particular availability goals or maybe meet local data restrictions around locality of where data is stored. You can move data in and out of the cloud quickly because we've integrated into it our spare our high-speed data transfer technologies. And for some sorts of data, data where there is some structure, you can actually query data in place with a feature called IBM SQL query. So let's look at those storage tiers. We provide four key storage tiers. The standard storage tier gives you a set of basic capabilities that match high performance and low latency. These are really used where you need to access data on a frequent basis. And by that we mean multiple times per month. There's no charge for data which is retrieved other than the operational request itself and any outbound bandwidth that you might consume. For data which is used less frequently, we have a vault option, typically used for data which is maybe accessed once a month or less. But the thing is, is that when you do need to access it, you need to access it in real time. So you don't want to wait for the file to be returned to you. For data which is accessed even less frequently, we have a cold vault. Again, data can be accessed in real time when, and as and when you need it, but it's really used for use cases where data is only accessed maybe a few times a year or even less frequently. Now, Choosing one of these options really requires that you understand how often you are going to be using and accessing the data in the files that you're storing. For those people where it's actually more difficult to predict how you're going to access the files, we have a flex option, which is used for where you have a mix of hot and cold workloads or hot and cold objects that you need to store. Finally, it's worth bearing in mind that we have automatic archiving based into this so that if you want to, you can set up policies that allow you to move data from one tier to another as and when your access needs change. 
We also mentioned a choice of resiliency options. And there are three resiliency options that you can see here, cross-region, regional, and single data center. The single data center option allows you to basically specify where your data is located. If you need to specify that your data stays in a location in a specific country, then the single data center resiliency option is the one for you. If you want to have data within a region stored maybe in three data centers across a country, then that's what we have the regional option for. And then the cross region is effectively multi-country data resiliency and allows you to protect against an entire regional unavailability or an outage. So there are trade-offs to be made, but we provide you a range of choices that allow you to specify how the data is protected, how quickly you can access it, and also the degree of locality to where the data is stored. If you want to know more about cloud object storage, go to ibm.com slash cloud slash object storage for more details. In further videos in the sequence, we'll actually take you through how to set up and use object storage to meet your business goals.